Hey guys, Aaron Gould with the Gould Brothers here, and I am excited because I'm driving down to the airport. I'm going to fly down to Georgia and meet up with John Lovell and the Warrior Poet Society, and he's going to be teaching me how to shoot behind concealment or cover. Pretty excited to bring you guys along for that, so stay tuned. I don't retreat, flag. Good shooting, but you retreated again. Why'd you uh, give up the battlefield? Flag, flag, see the flag, flag barrel. Kill him. Lots of misses and your whole body exposed. Made the flight all the way down to Georgia to be here with the John Lovell from the Warrior Poet Society. And we are going to have a little fun here on the range, right? Yeah, man, but when you say the and then pause, it makes them feel like, of like oh, this guy's important. And <laughs> I flew a thousand miles to be here with you today to train and to learn something. Well, let's do it, man. Let's all jump right. in, it'll be fun. Today, we're gonna to be shooting from behind concealment or cover. And I, that's not something I've done a lot of. What can you tell us? Sure, so with dealing with cover and concealment, immediately you broach the subject and I'm kind of like, man, there's so much to talk about. I've like, you could talk about like, you stand off, don't crowd. You talk about the ballistic barriers. Is it cover or concealment? Does mm -hmm. it stop rounds or not? But really, regardless of all the different things that jumped to my head, I really wanted to distill it down to three really, really critical things. And it's not shooting behind cover. The idea is okay. fight behind cover, how to fight behind cover and uh, increase your odds of winning. So I think you brought up something really good there, is there's a difference between playing a game, three gun, which is an awesome shooting discipline. Love it. And fighting from behind cover. Way different. Both, both are cover. cool games. I like Absolutely. both games. Absolutely. The fighting, it's just a big chess game. And then the three gun is a different kind of game and a really, really cool one at that. But you gotta interact very differently. So I wanted to share three sins of cover and concealment use that probably you're not thinking of and maybe just not on the radar. But before we do it, I wanted to illustrate the points. I wanted to allow you to arrive there without me even telling you about it. But we're starting at the wrong place. We're starting behind cover and this is not how you learn proper use of cover and concealment. You don't just come back here and start Absolutely not. This is the worst place to learn cover and concealment right off the bat. Okay, the question I have is why? Uh, it's because you got to start with the bad guy's perspective. Every skill and every tactic must be vetted by force on force training. That means there's a lot of these little range fictions that we can multiply of like, I think that this would work best. Even if you're a line coach and just watching it, a lot of stuff feels and even could look good, but the enemy knows what works and what doesn't work. And so you always start and end, everything needs to be pressure tested by force on force training. Does it actually work? And it's pretty easy to tell what it is. It's just at some point we stop shooting, we put on equipment, we convert our rifles over and we get in a fight. And a lot of people have like, ooh, I think this is the best way to do it. I'm like, great, we'll test it. And that's what we do. We pressure test stuff and we just do a whole bunch of fights and see what works. So you're talking about like being in a shoot house or using sim rounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, gotcha. And so you can test tactics because a lot of folks will just weigh in on the comments keyboard commanders of like, well, I think this, and they'll have some theory and unpack some arguments. And I've seen a lot of it and some of it's good and a lot of it's just trash. It, okay. I get it in your head, it looks beautiful. You can see it so clean, you're like, oh yeah, that'd work. And then you try it and you just, just, just paint it from head to toe. It's like, yeah, that didn't work very well. Let's start with the enemy's perspective. So yeah. the way this will work is I'm going to uh, send you guys down range to play the part of the bad guy. I'm gonna take the bolt carrier group out of this uh, firearm to make it no longer a firearm. Firearms, you're not allowed to point at anyone, but uh, collections of parts, you can. Uh, we're being very safe. Remember guys, Absolutely. you aren't actually physically here. So if I point a collection of parts, because it doesn't have a bolt carrier group, it's not a gun, at you, you're safe. Now, as you look at this, what you're trying to decide is who would I least and who would I most want to fight? Some of the stuff I do, it's gonna look awful. Some of it's gonna look okay, or some of it'll be look really good. And your idea is to say from the enemy's perspective, what is good use of cover and what is bad use of cover. So you're gonna see a, a, a mix of all kinds of good and bad here.
Which one of these do you feel like I would have had no chance if you had a gun trained on this location? Probably the, the very slow lean out. And so this one is don't sneak. And it's the first thing I wanted to point out. Don't sneak. It feels sneaky to be behind cover and you're like, all right, here we go, here we go. But what it looks like to them is just, a looks slow bad. moving target like coming out. It gives the enemy the time to see, react, and by the time you're out to see the threat, they're already reacting. If you're sneaking out from cover or concealment to shoot and you're in force on force, you're gonna get lit up every single time. You're gonna just die a thousand deaths. You're not gonna be hitting them. You give away your position too quick. And so when you pop out, it's better to take it like an ambush. That's number one is don't sneak. Sneaky is not sneaky, which is odd because when you start here, sneaky feels sneaky. Down there, it doesn't look sneaky at all. It's terrible. It feels right here. It's very wrong down there. All right, what else? Who would you like to fight? Standing up. The standing up? The standing up person because they expose more as they lean out compared to when you were down low to the ground. There was just less of a target that came out. So this is varying our use of cover and making it unpredictable. The rule isn't you went left, now you have to go right, now you have to go left, because people pick up on patterns like yep. two, four. Six. Yeah, and so he immediately sensed a pattern. So people pick up on the pattern, so it's make your use of cover unpredictable. Yeah. It's not one of my three, but it is a good one. So don't sneak is number one. Yep, that's number one, but it's not the worst one. The worst one is flagging, and that's whenever you saw my foot hanging out there, or my elbow, or my shoulder, and I'd pause, and then I would either sneak or I would take it. And so even when I ambushed, you saw where I was coming from. The jig was up. Yeah. You knew I was standing yeah. right or kneeling left never flag and I was doing that in demonstration some of them were good and the worst ones were the sneaks and the flags do not flag every time you flag you start a death clock on the battlefield which means they see you and like oh there he is and then they just wait for you to pop out now you you think the battle's just begun but really you're about to walk into a bullet and you'll never even see it coming it's devastating. Never ever let them see you coming. Don't flag. But unless you've had a line coach or you've done force on force and seen it, like set up a video camera, do what I just did against a video camera and then watch it back and see if you ever flagged. See when you snuck. See if you would want to fight which versions of you and you should be able to pick up pretty quickly some of your movements that you thought were good were terrible and bad. And so that's the fun, is a little force on force training. It's free, you get to do the things. Don't sneak and don't fly. Number three is don't present more of your body than is necessary to the target. And I would say the first two generally are worse than the third. If you're out there just too much body out there, well, it's kind of like, oh, screw it, hide behind a wall of lead. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> like, be aggressive, you know? Uh, and that, uh, so uh, it's, If you're out in the open, just let them have it. Yeah, and, and when I play with context, now all of a sudden that may not be true. What is and isn't a good idea changes dramatically. So there's sometimes on the battlefield where you could just pop out and there's a lot of you exposed, but it's a, it's a fast game, meaning I'm gonna shoot them in the face and move on. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I traded a little bit of hiding for a little bit of speed. And everything you do is a gamble. You can't have everything you want at once. Every time, every time you throw a punch, you're exposed somewhere. And that's true for everything you do. It's all a game of trade-offs. And, and you're going to have to take a calculated risk in yeah. order to engage that target at some point. The best operators in the world uh, wear body armor because they recognize it's a gamble. Now, they're awesome at gambling, you know, the, the top tier one guys. Uh, they're better at gambling, but they still wear body armor, <laughs> you know? Yep. So, uh, and that's for a reason. But uh, don't present more of yourself to the target than is absolutely uh, necessary. It's a painful learning process. It's something you can't possibly get good at this without a coach. War is a social affair. It is. You can't get good at war alone. It's a social affair. You know, so all violence, like all violence is a social affair. We showed you how to do it. Now you should shoot behind cover and concealment. All, all right. right. Don't sneak. Don't flag. And don't present more of your body than necessary to the target. Yep. And, uh, and you're going to grade me. Doing that good, doing it uh, wrong. How, how about I just yell at them some for instant gratification? Hey, I'm here to learn. I'm like a sponge yeah. for you, John. Slay, bro, you're gonna kill it. I'll give you a command. Standing right, standing left, kneeling right, kneeling left. One of those four positions. Okay. Your job is to get your body set and then take ground like it's an ambush. Do you shoot? Don't retreat. Otherwise, you're practicing cowardice. As you go, pop, pop, and then hide. Well, why'd you hide? You just gain the battlefield. What'd you give it back for? And what happened to the guy? Is he dead? 
Is he moving on you? Did you miss completely? No, Is he gotta... charging? You don't know because you retreated. And so once gaining fire superiority, you're not giving it up unless you have a good reason. So after you shoot, you hold and I'll give you a new command and you don't go until I say, ready, fight. There's no shot timer on this. Okay. There's just a death clock that has to do with exposure to the target. Got it? The game is, is he never sees you coming. And when he does, it's an eye behind a muzzle with an effective hit. Gotcha. That's the death clock. It's not a shot timer, it's a death clock. All right, very good. Uh, load and make ready. Cool. And make sure that elbow stays in tighter because it's one more yeah. flag. It's right. one more flag. It's yeah. something to be able to like, way. hey, here I come. <laughs> All right, here we go. Standing right, ready and fight. Tap rack. Tap, tap, rack. Re-engage, re-engage. Get in there. He's fire. How much of your body is exposed right here? He's got all the way up to the hip. He could shoot you in the hip. Stomach Almost half lungs. your body, all of this stuff. So what we want is right here. Let's bring this out just a tiny bit more. You need a base, so I'm not like advocating way over there. Rifle up. There we go. Oh, and make we sure go. we never have a tilt in the gun. So your body can lean, but your rifle okay. always goes straight up. That keeps you from shooting your barricade. So optic is always straight up. Let's do standing right. Ready? Fight. I don't, don't retreat. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Good. Now, when you came out, your barrel did this number. It went, here I come. And it waved around. It went, hello, this way. Instead, what we want to do is we want to come parallel and attack straight out. See that? Yes. Much better. You don't wait. Yeah, much better. Ready? Fight. Flag. Kneeling right. Ready? Fight. Good shooting, but you retreated again. Why'd you ah. give up the battlefield? Kneeling left. Ready? Fight. Flag. Flag. See the foot? He saw you coming a mile away. Flag <laughs> barrel. <laughs> I'm just saying, when you set up, your foot was already out there. Standing left. Standing left. There he is. There he is. Flag. Flag. He sees your hip. Play it in just a little bit more. Don't peek at him, fight him. Kill him! <laughs> Lots of misses and your whole body exposed. Look at that, everything. I'm, I'm out in the open. There's nothing of you behind cover. Standing right, ready, fight. <laughs> Much better, still that leg is out, that femoral artery is being like, Wide right uh, open. Bleed yeah, there it out. is. Kneeling left, ready, fight. Flag, see that? Yep. You immediately fixed it. We're retreating. <laughs> You're killing it though. You did great. And uh, obvious, very obvious the progress we made just in that. Some problems is you were inconsistent every time you came to the cover. Sometimes you were here, sometimes foot was facing out, sometimes it was in here. Sometimes you'd go this foot forward and you'd be kind of bladed. Other times you're forced. Here you're hanging out way out there and that's because you're not switching shoulders. Right. Sometimes that's the right, right call, but Sometimes it's not, depends on context. But even when you popped out, you didn't pop out to here, you'd pop out to here where you could, it's, it's like this was a distant memory in the background drifting away. I need to go through and get my mechanics. Yeah, uh, and I'm doing a disservice to you as a trainer and I'm more of, it's real boring for them to take the time to exactly. coach you up, right? I'm immediately like, no, let's screw it, throw them in. Let's, uh, let's burn it down because right. it's more it's fun. It's so, more uh, fun for them guys. Yeah, they're not going to watch you for two hours while we <laughs> slow cook this goose. But I'm learning a lot and I appreciate it. Oh, you're killing it, man. So easy to see the progress too. You're a great shooter already. Oh, appreciate it. My stress level is actually up. My adrenaline's starting to come yep. up. It's not scared type of adrenaline, but that stress level is up enough that you're just like, you're starting to get into that because it's so new and so out of the ordinary. Yeah. So that's where training really comes in. That's why yeah. I not only want to learn the skills that you're bringing, but also by doing this, the next time I come in, my head's going to be a lot more calm. I owed him anyway because we did some. Uh, uh, we did a video for our channel, Warrior Poet Channel, uh, and he was doing trick shooting and stuff, and I immediately sucked at it. But it's not like he let me warm up. I shot like eight rounds normal, and he's like, "All right, now behind the back, between the legs." I'm like, "Wait, I don't." So I owed you. I owed you this. Hey, and you showed that you're good at what you practice. Can I burn a few more rounds? <sighs> yeah, I thought you'd never ask. All right. Standing right, ready, fight. Staying left. Ready, fight. Good.
standing right. Ready, fight. Kneeling left. Ready, fight. And left on safe. Let it hang. Fantastic, huge progress, huge progress. You're, you're not flagging, you're not sneaking. You, when you come out, it's an ambush and you're not it, displaying huge amounts of your body unnecessarily to the target. You're doing the three, you're, you're crushing it. I'm getting there, I'm getting there. Man, so good. Well, you, you really hit it right there with that footwork thing. In order to have consistency, you gotta be doing the footwork because everything fo flows up from there yeah. on your movement. And I'm feeling like I can take this back now yeah. and do some training at home with a camera out front. There you go. Yep. And uh, be increasing my ability to fight from concealment or cover. That's right, man. You killed it. All right. Awesome. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. you're welcome. You're welcome. John, I just appreciate being able to come down and do some training. And I'm always trying to increase my own skills. And I think we brought something to them that they can definitely learn from. So I appreciate it. If you don't know who the Warrior Poet Society is and John Lovell, check them out. I'll put it down in the description. Uh, awesome guys, and they can actually come and do training with you guys, right? Yeah, well, we uh, we have classes that post around the country. We may so, be coming to your area. We book up pretty quick, so you got to kind of watch the website. I will personally attest it's good stuff, and John and his team are good teachers, or instructors would probably be the better word for it. Where do they find that information? Uh, just type in Warrior Poet in the internet. Remember, it's impossible to hit the shots you never take, so pull that trigger and shoot for your dreams. We'll see you next time.